I fully believe that being visually adept is part of being a human. Ben Franklin wanted it to be in every, uh, you know, everybody, to be a well-rounded person, you have to learn how to draw. It's a way of kind of understanding the environment in a completely different way. Some of it is actually analytical, where you're able to kind of understand your world through a visual means that is much more sensitive. And I think that that's what art does, it attunes you to that kind of stuff. But what does it say and what does it mean? And that's part of what I think art education does, is it, it, it gets people into a habit of analyzing and getting meaning from, from the world. I'm a painter, I paint in oil, I paint on panels, hard panels. I don't like canvas because it gives. My paintings communicate a story of my own, but that I think is not terribly unrelated to other people. The conceptual ideas that I deal with in my research have to do with issues of national identity, regional identity, the ways in which art reflects the larger culture in which it was produced and the constraints on artists at various moments in time. Looking historically on these types of identity formation and social change helps to provide a background for understanding why things happen are happening now. The work that I produce to exhibit for the most part is three-dimensional, colorful, sculptural, painterly forms. I kind of have a, an abstract idea but it's connected to memory or connected to a feeling that I really am trying to convey. For me, it's a, it's a way of being able to hold, like try to make concrete the things that I kind of feel but don't know how to respond to. There's a guy named Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's a scientist, an astrophysicist. He said that the first way he tried to understand the world was by drawing as a kid. And then he becomes an astrophysicist. But drawing was his answer to how come you became a scientist. Drawing in particular is like the grandfather of all of art. It seems to get into our head somewhere where we can't exactly touch it or name it maybe, but it helps us become better people or more involved in the earth and our lives and our relationships and even when we watch TV. People are taught to read words, but they're not taught to interpret images ever because there's a, somehow this presumption that what you see is truth and that everyone intuitively knows how to understand what they're seeing. But it's quite clear, especially when you teach something like visual culture, that people have very different ideas about how you go about interpreting it and contextualizing things. It, it's a lot easier to look at a Victorian painting and take it apart and ask questions about what all the significance of all the details are, I think, for young folks today than to read like Dickens, which is just really dense and turgid and difficult to really get at. Whereas looking at Victorian paintings was just fascinating and, and evocative. I think that in a way, visual imagery can be a, a better entry into the understanding of a past moment than, than literature can be. Learning about art is a really fun way of learning about the past. Art can be used to teach many different subjects um, and make them, not only make them fun, but make them more memorable. In our school, we have this incredible art program. Meanwhile, there were lots of other schools in the city who were having their arts programs cut completely. For a kid to not have the experiences that our students had, you know, coexisting in the same city at the same time, I definitely know that it was a healthy thing, whether these people decided to go into art or not, to be in a situation where they were being asked to put their ideas visually down on paper, work with materials that felt very natural at that age to be using. It was such a powerful means of communication for students of that age, um, that to not have that would really be a big loss. The caves in Lascaux, France, and in Altamira, Spain, I think prove that from the very beginning people were interested in it, at the very least, depicting the imagery from their lives. We don't know why they did it, I think, no one really knows the reasons, but it was evidently really important to people. Just going on that, like almost going on the faith that they were right, makes me think, it, why would it stop suddenly just because we develop other technology? 
a group of people inhabiting an earth, the earth for a particular period of time, and the artifacts that we leave or the artifacts that we create really talk about what it's like to be alive on earth right now and what it's like to be who we are, whatever social or economic class, whatever gender, whatever very specific condition we have. It, it, I think it has a huge import in kind of recording. Without imagination, you kind of can't go too far in anything. If we can't take meaning from things, it's really it's like sort of a it's a it's a difficult it's difficult to enjoy, you know, our world. <laughs>